Hello everybody and uh, welcome to the next session of NPTEL online certification course on CMOS digital VLSI design. Uh, this module is uh, primarily named as CMOS inverter basics and this will be part 1. Uh, we will be also dealing with the other features of that in the second module uh, for this course. Uh, what we will be doing in the subsequent slides, I will just give you the outline of the whole uh, module which is approximately 45 minutes to half an hour. Uh, pri primarily we will be looking at the CMOS inverter. Now CMOS inverter is the main workhorse of all digital VLSI circuit design which primarily means that this is one uh, structure or a, uh, or a circuit which helps you to do a 1 to 0 and a 0 to 1 transition at a very fast pace. Uh, what we will be also looking is into is basically two things. So, we will have a basic look at the basic idea of inverter CMOS. So, this is basic idea means its functionality and its uh, what is known as the transfer characteristics. So, we look at it basic characteristics and transfer characteristics. After we have understood this part, we will have a look at the switch model of an inverter, which means that given an inverter, right, uh, can I do some approximations in the inverter so that the understanding of the transfer characteristics is relatively easy for all of us without compromising on the output characteristics of the device. Uh, after having done the switch model of the inverter, uh, we will actually go for the static behavior analysis. Static behavior primarily means that if you give a DC bias, how will the output voltage change with respect to the DC bias uh, for an inverter. We will also look into the fact that how therefore, we will be able to design or draw a voltage transfer characteristics, which means that if the input varies from 0 to VDD or a 0 to a high voltage, how does output vary. So, this, this VTC primarily means that if I am varying input from say 0 to 5 volts, then how my output is varying in, in what fashion. So, this is what we are supposed to do as far as voltage transfer characteristics of the device is concerned. Once we have understood the VTC or the voltage transfer characteristics of the device, uh, we should be in a position to explain uh, what is the meaning of switching threshold. What is the switching threshold is very, very important characteristics just like the threshold voltage of the device which we have understood in the previous lectures. Uh, switching threshold is defined as that voltage at which the transition between 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 takes place, right. So, we will, we will define what is switching threshold and we will see how can we calculate the switching threshold from the VTC of the device. So, if I know the voltage transfer characteristics, how do I know the switching threshold of the device. Uh, then we will be actually looking at what is known as a noise margin, right, very, very important property of an inverter, uh, which primarily means that uh, if you have if you if you in input a signal onto an inverter, any signal will obviously have a noise, right? Electrical noise are inbuilt, inherent in all the signals, whose origins are varied. So it's variety of noise which will be there. Uh, for example, Gaussian one by f noise will be there. There will be uh, short noise will be there, and something will be because of the wiring which th which carries the signal. Because of that, there will be some noise. There will be junction noise and so on and so forth. Now. Our job will be at the very first stage to remove the noise as much as possible, right? Because if you put it into an amplifier and try to amplify the signal, the noise also gets amplified by the same amount. So, I need to reject noise at a very early stage of my processing, right? So, that my signal to noise ratios are higher at later stages, which therefore comes to an important issue of a CMOS inverter that this inverter intrinsically is a very good noise rejector. So, what we will be understanding in noise margin is basically what is the meaning of noise rejection property, right. So, this is the noise rejection property of an inverter and this noise rejection property means that how I can able to reduce the noise or remove the noise at a very easy at a very e easily. We will also see how this noise margin or the noise rejection property is related to the applied voltages related to the uh, the the aspect ratio, what is the meaning of aspect ratio we discussed in the previous turn, this is aspect ratio, right, we will we will repeat this, how it is related to uh, VDD which is the applied voltage, how it is related to the threshold voltage of the device and so on and so forth. 
So, once we, why, we, why we are doing this? Then we can actually manipulate these things, these properties and achieve a very good noise margin for us, right? So, that we are able to achieve a very good noise ejection. The last part of the outline of the, of the whole talk, talk will be, we will be looking at the gain calculation. We will be looking at the gain calculation, right? And this is uh, quite important because CMOS structure or CMOS inverter has been the mainstay not only for digital design, but for analog design as well. And we, I will discuss to you why gain calculation is important. What do you mean by gain? Gain as the uh, word suggests, gain basically means uh, rate of change of, so it is basically del V out, del V in, right. So, how much change in the output is there because of the change in the input. Now, if your gain is high, I can use the CMOS for my amplification purposes also, right. CMOS I can use as an amplification or as an amplifier, right. I can use it as an amplifier for all practical purposes, which means that it is voltage gain A V which is voltage gain, maybe if it is 100 let us suppose, that if I give an input peak to peak swing of say 10 millivolts, which is 10 to the power minus 3 volts, then the output will be 10 to the power plus 2, which is basically equals to 10 to the power minus 1, which is just equals to 0 0.1 volts. So, basically meaning that a 10 millivolt, millivolt peak to peak input will result in a V out of approximately 0 0.1 volt for the CMOS, which means that I can use a CMOS both for analog design as well as digital design. Why for analog design? Because then I can use it as an amplifier for amplification of analog signals and we will see how it will be used for digital signals, right. This is one thing which you should be careful about. The second thing is having a better gain or a large gain also allows for the inverter to swing from 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 at a much faster pace. So, your switching speeds are much higher between 1 and 0. So, having a gain which is high not only helps you for analog design, for analog design, but it also helps you for digital design. Why? Because in digital design, your 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 swings, these are very, very good swings because it will move very fast because your gain is very high. We will see uh, in the uh, subsequent slides how, how it works out, right. So, I, I hope you are able to explain why uh, gain calcul calculation is very important. With this basic outline of the whole um, talk or the basic idea, let me go to the next slide and explain to you the basic inverter. It is a very, very important and it will remain with us for the whole uh, module till we finish off this course on CMOS digital VLSI design. If you look here closely, this is the basic basics idea. This is the, so, this is the basic idea and I will, I will explain to you how this works out. See, uh, if you look very carefully, uh, we have discussed in our previous turn, in our previous lectures that if I am using an enhancement mode MOSFET, enhancement mode, enhancement mode MOSFET and if it is an N channel, enhancement mode MOSFET and if it is an N channel which is N MOS, I require a gate voltage, right, remember should be larger than the threshold voltage of the device for to make it on for an N MOS. For a P MOS, I require it to be less than or equal to should VGS should be greater than mod of VTP, which is basically meaning that threshold voltage of the P type device, right. And if it is so, I will be able to achieve its switching on and off condition. So, let us see how does it work as an inverter. So, what is this? This is basically a PMOS. So, this is a PMOS here, right. It is connected, its source is connected to, to VDD, right, as we had discussed earlier. We have an NMOS here whose source is connected to ground, is connected to ground and we have whose gates of M1 and M2. So, M2 is basically your PMOS, right, is PMOS and M1 is your NMOS, right. And I am giving input to the gates of M1 and M2, right. So, please understand for all practical purposes, the input signal in most of the cases in digital VLSI design will be given to the gate side of the device. So, the gate will be primarily responsible for taking the input signal, right. And you will in most of the cases, for example, in this case in front of you, you will have the output at the drain of the two. So, this is basically the drain of PMOS and the drain of NMOS are together they are shorted with each other. So, the drain of, so this, 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 this is basically your drain of uh, PMOS and this is your drain of 
n mass and they are shorted together and we will get an output. Let me show to you therefore, with the idea how does it work as a device which is an inverter. What does inverter basically mean? Inverter means that if you give an input 1, if I give an input, if I give an input equals to 1, I will get an output equals to 0. If I give an input equals to 0, I get an output equals to 1. So, this, this basically means it inverts the signal, right. Please understand when we say 1, it corresponds to VDD which is the applied voltage here, right and 0 corresponds to VGND, right. So, ground which you see here, it just happens that the ground is 0, ground is 0 and this is a positive voltage. Please keep in mind you can also encounter inverters where this ground can be actually a negative voltage. But you have to always ensure that the source of M1, right? The source of M1, M1 source should always be to the most negative terminal. Please understand, and M2 source should be at the most positive terminal of the whole system if you want to work it properly. With this knowledge, let me therefore explain to you how it works out. As I just now told to you. If I give, give an input of 1, I get input output 0. If I give in, input of 0, I get an output of 1. So, let us see how it works out. So, let me give you an input transition from 0 to 1, right? 0 to 1, fine. So, initially I had an input waveform which is basically 0, and then I do a transition and go from 0 to 1. Let us see how it works out. When it was 0, please understand M2 will be switched on, M2 will be switched on, right? Let us suppose there is a capacitance here now, this capacitance is we will discuss later on, but primarily this capacitance is defined as the load capacitance and it effectively takes care of any capacitance occurring between gate and drain here CGD of PMOS. It also takes care of CG this here NMOS gate to drain, it also takes care of the next stage inverter uh, design, which means that if you, if you drive a next stage inverter then it looks something like this, right? it looks something like this. So, the input capacitance is here and the output capacitance is here, if you add all those together we get C load available here. With this uh, what we therefore, we come to the point therefore, therefore if I give 0 to 1 transition here, I get if I get 0 here M2 is switched on from my basic discussion which we have discussed earlier and since it is 0, my M1 is basically off when when you have zero input because for enhancement mode n channel mosfet you require a gate voltage larger than the threshold voltage for this m1 to be on but since the gate voltage applied is less than the threshold voltage which is zero almost cut off so m1 will go to cut off so m1 will be going into cut off cut off and m2 will be actually switched on and therefore it will be saturation so this will start to behave like a current source m2 will therefore behave like a current source and M1 will be cut off and therefore, will be it will be basically a 0, 0, nothing will happen. S when, it is, when it is there, then this C load will get charged by which dimension by this, this path, right. So, you will have VDD through M2 because M2 is on charges to C load, right. So, what I can do therefore, is that I can replace this M2 by a simple resistance and I can therefore, make this as a open switch, we will discuss this in the next slide only, but this is what we can do. So, this is the R P and this goes to V D D, which means that, which means that, that the capacitance is getting charged to a high value when my input is 0, which means that this voltage here will actually go to high value, why? Because capacitor is getting charged. So, as long as your input is 0, my output will always be equals to 1. Am I clear? This is the charging process, right? Let us look at the other side of the story. Now, let us suppose it goes from 0 to 1, right? As it goes to 1, just the reverse happens in this case. What, what reverse happens? Reverse happens is that suppose I am going from 0 to 1 and I go to 1 here from 0, then M2 goes in the on state because threshold voltage is larger than the gate voltage is larger than threshold voltage. M1, M1 goes to the on state and M2 goes to an off state, right? So, M2 is now in cut off, cut off and M1 is in on state and saturation state and therefore, what will happen? This will be cut off, right and therefore, there will be no direct connection between VDD and V out, but 
quite interestingly my the, the, the accumulated voltage across this the charge accumulated at C load will find a low resistance path and will actually go to the ground from this case. Am I clear? So, what will happen to V out? V out will go to 0 because initially it was fully charged to 1. Now, it, it is finding a low resistance path through which can drop down and therefore, the V out goes to 0 right and therefore, V out goes to 0. So, which means that if my input goes from 0 to 1, this is my V in right V in my output will actually go from 1 to 1 to 0. So, this is my V out and this is my V in. So, I got 1 to 0 and this is uh, 0 to 1. Right? So, this is the basic understanding of a inverter, but therefore given a signal therefore, if I give a signal something like this uh, let us suppose a clock I give right, then I will start getting a signal which is just neg negation of that. That means, when this is high say this becomes low and so on and so forth it will go like this right and something like this it will go. So, whenever our input goes high output goes low and vice versa we can have a look, which means that uh, an interesting part therefore, comes to the mind that CMOS therefore, can be useful for switching from 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 that is very important and important uh, design consideration. As I discussed with you in the previous slide, now let me give to you uh, the switch model of a inverter. As I discussed with you in the previous state that whenever when V in was equals to V d d, let us suppose V in which what, what was V in? Please understand V in was nothing but this, this V in right. If I give it equals to V d d right and this is also equals to V d d right, then gate then, then gate to source gate to source because source is grounded for m 1. So, for m 1 m 1 source is grounded. So, V g s for m 1 will be nothing but V d d minus 0 and therefore, equals to V d d which is much larger than the threshold voltage of the device therefore, switch on the device m 1 right. So, what I am giving here is I am giving 0 and then I am giving V d d here and, and again I am going to 0 and then again V d d. So, this is 0 and V d d right. So, so if you look at this slide now by, by previous discussion when V in equals to V d d as I discussed to you N MOS goes to the on state and therefore, it is therefore, there is a direct part between source and drain of the N MOS and therefore, it is represented by a resistance here R n and the PMOS is in the cutoff state and therefore, it is represented by a switch which is open switch in such a case. This is switch model. Now, the reverse will happen what? When V in equals to 0, N PMOS switches on and N MOS switches off. So, I will replace PMOS by a switch or by a, by a resistance whose value is equals to R p and we will replace the N MOS by a switch which is basically open right. This is switch model. Uh, a switch uh, switch model available to you. So, when the switch closes down it is it is it is represented by a resistance switch opens it is an open circuit right. Please understand here you will have always a capacitance here C L right you will always have a capacitance here C L. This capacitance comes by virtue of many factors which I discussed to you in the previous turn which means that this capacitor is initially charged through this resistance right C L and the next phase it is getting discharged through this resistance right. So, it is basically a first order differential equation solution right. You have one passive element here available with you one passive element which is basically C L. So, you will have first order differential equations these first order differential equations you know very well to solve it you must have studied in your network theory courses and solutions will give you uh, uh, what is known as a delay basically R C R C time constants or R C R C delays right and therefore, you see the importance of the switch model that first hand it gives me the working principle and without compromising on the output characteristics of the device gives me the value of the delay available to us for all practical purposes right. We now come to the therefore, uh, the static uh, static uh, behavior static behavior we will just discuss one by one. Let me give you the first the easy one and then we will go for, for, the, uh, for the difficult one. Uh, what happens is let me start with the last part that there is no static power consumption I will explain to you what do I mean by that. Static power basically means that when the device is not operating or not switching between 0 and 1, 1 to 0, then we define that to be a static operation, which means that you give 1, you get output 0, or you give 0 and you get output 1, and you are staying there for infinitely long duration of time. Then we define that to be as the static condition. What is dynamic condition? Dynamic condition is when you have repeated switchings available to you, right. 
and therefore whenever you talk of static static uh, uh, power consumptions the, there is no power consumption and the reason being very simple the reason being why it is very simple because and in static case you do not have any direct path between VDD and ground if you look very carefully uh, in static case whenever you give 1 or 0 there is no direct path between between the VDD and ground. So, you will never have a short circuit current available between VDD and ground. This is very very important uh, observation which I want to focus here that means the that means the power dissipation levels static power dissipation levels are typically very small. Let us look at high input impedance uh, the impedance in what the impedance is what basically del V del I is basically the impedance. Now, if you go back to your previous slide here and or even here if you want to go and if you look at the, uh, the, the structure you see I am giving the input to the gate side of my M1 and M2. You remember you go back to your basic uh, physics of MOS device then the gate side will have what will have oxide layer right with a very large dielectric constant and therefore, any signal which you give on to M2 there will be no current flowing in this direction or even in this direction. Why because your oxide thickness is so small it is basically a dielectric and insulator. So, there will be no current flowing through the device as a result del V del I will be infinitely high which means that that the out input impedance of any device of especially the inverter is very very high right it is very very high. Uh, I will just leave a statement at this stage this will help you to improve the fan out. What is fan out? Fan out is defined as the capability of a single device driving n number of such devices is defined as fan out. I will give you an example let us suppose I have an inverter and it drives 1, 2, 3, 4 such devices such means with same characteristics the devices are being drawn. Then we define the fan out to be fan out to be equals to 4 in this case right. So, high input impedance means that you can have large amount of fan out or you can have large and I will tell you the reason why. See since they are all connected like this like this which you see in front of you and since there is no current path available between this point and this point ideally you can drive infinite number of such devices uh, very easily in static mode not in dynamic mode please. In static mode means what I give a 0, I give a 0 here, I get a 1 here, I get a 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 here so everywhere that is all. I just stand there and I wait for infinitely long duration of time. This is the static case under such a criteria I can actually drive infinite number of devices under ideal condition in static mode. However, in dynamic design in whenever you are doing a transient response whenever you are doing a transient so uh, this is the, this is also known as a steady state response steady state for a steady state but the transient response actually is degraded transient response is degraded i will explain to you why because of this see the reason why is transient means what you are giving a rising or a falling pulse which means that at any point of time you are now either trying to charge or discharge the capacitor if your fan out is high then at this node you actually see larger number of capacitance and therefore, to charge or discharge a larger capacitance you require large amount of time and therefore, the speed slowdowns or the degradation of frequency takes place. Second the this is this is an important point which we will be encountering as we move along and discussing the other parts. The third part is basically your this part that means, output impedance is typically very low right and uh, uh, low output impedance primarily means that it is less prone to noise which means that if there are any noise sources inserted at the output of my NMOS it can easily reject it and have a noise free environment and therefore, signal to noise ratios at the output are typically very high right. So, this is SNR is basically signal to noise ratios to noise ratio right. The third thing is ratio ratio less logic level which I will put it here a very important one it tells me that irrespective of the aspect ratio of PMOS or NMOS irrespective of the aspect ratio W by L of PMOS or NMOS the static behavior is independent of that of W by L ratio which means that you go on changing any W by L ratio you will still get the same 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 transition which means that for any value of W by L 
aspect ratio of NMOS and PMOS, I could easily get uh, the logic levels available to me up till VDD. So, to, so where I am going? While charging, I am going to VDD. While discharging, I am going to zero. So, please understand a very very important property. Therefore, is the first one, which is this one, that while charging, I am going to VDD. And while discharging, I'm actually going to zero. So I'm able to get the full swing of my signal output signal available to me, and I'm not wasting any of the signals in a CMOS inverter. So this is quite an interesting and important property of the static behavior of the device. Uh, just to give you an idea, just to give you an idea, this this, this device, uh, there is also a name for this device which is which is used. Since M1 is responsible for pulling down the voltage at V out from 1 to 0, we define M1 to be also known as pull down device, pull down device right or also refers to PD, PDD and M2 since it is responsible for 0, so this is 1 to 0 and this is responsible for 0 to 1, so we define this as a pull up device. So, it is pull up device. So, I have got a pull down device and pull up device everything below. So, the best way to notify is and we will be doing it when combinational logic comes into picture everything below V out is pull down everything above V out is pull up. So, this is your pull up network pull up is a pull up uh, device and this is your pull down device all your pull down device right PMOS is a pull down device. Uh, we have understood how to therefore, we have understood the static behavior. Please understand I am still not doing any dynamic behavior which means that I am not giving a 0 to 1, 1 to 0 transitions. I have only giving 0 or 1 and checking out what is happening in the output right and I am satisfied with the fact that I get the full swing and I also get a very important fact that the output node please understand the output node here right output node which is. Uh, this is the output node right it is either connected to a ground or connected to VDD it is never floating node please understand. So, output node is output node is not a floating node it is not a floating node right it is either connected to a low impedance ground or to VDD both are low impedance in fact uh, voltage source ideally output vo uh, output impedance of a voltage source is infinitely is infinitely small approximately equals to 0 and is already ground. So, every time it swings to VDD or to 0 the output node is connected to a very low impedance node right and that also makes it very less prone to noise right. We now come to the important idea that if we have understood how a CMOS works can we try to find out the IV characteristics or the voltage transfer characteristics of a CMOS which means that if I vary input from 0 to VDD how does my output vary in the output phase right. So, what we will be doing is we will be varying from 0 to VDD let us suppose VDD is 2.5 then we vary input from 0 to 2.5 and we see how output is varying in a relative same manner right. So, this is this is my job for the next 2 to 3 slides. Can a, how, let us see how it works out right. So, what we need to do again coming back to your previous diagram or previous uh, explanations you see very clearly here right. Uh, the idea is that if I am able to plot the IV characteristics of NMOS right I plot the IV characteristics of NMOS I also plot the IV characteristics of PMOS both can be easily done right. Then we try to bring it on the same coordinate system because please understand the VDS for NMOS will be positive, but VDS for PMOS will be negative. So, we have to do some manipulation to bring it onto the same scale same VDS scale right. Once we have done that a quite an important or interesting property is that since the current flowing through them will be always equal to each other we try to find out those points in the characteristics where the currents are equal for both NMOS and PMOS. Once we get those points we simply add those points and we get the voltage transfer characteristics. So, let me see let me explain to you how does it work out as such. The first step is we plot the graph for PMOS please understand in PMOS your VDS will be negative. So, this is negative side this is this is negative and your 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 
IDVD characteristics is also negative therefore, the current is also negative this side is negative and VGSP and VGSP is minus 1.5 minus 2.5 which means that for minus 1 for minus 1 you have smaller current and minus 2.5 we have a larger current as expected from my previous discussion we will not go further than this we have already explained to you in this manner. But it is exactly almost symmetrical to NMOS apart from the fact that the, uh, the axis VDS has been shifted that is all looks exactly the same right. What we do next step is look we, we, we try to find out this we do a mirroring. So, we do a mirroring across x axis. So, this was my x axis I mirror it across the x axis. So, what I do I just blank it over this x axis. So, what I did I blank it over x axis as I did uh, the, the there is there is certain got a governing equations which would be which you should be very careful about uh, understanding it right. The governing equations are this. So, let me say I have got n mos here and a p mos here this is my p mos right and this is my n mos here. So, this is v in and this is v out right then certain governing equations should be very clear to you this is v d d. The first governing equation is i d s p will be equals to minus i d s n right and very true also the current continuity will always be maintained negative sign because it is basically a electron another is a hole v g s n is equals to v in I will explain to you v g s p uh, v g s p is equals to v in minus v d d we have v d s n equals to v out and we have v d s p equals to v out minus v d d. I will explain to you how, how we are getting all these terms. See what is the meaning of v g s n? v g s n is gate to source of n, n, n MOSFET. So, I have got n MOS here. So, gate to source this voltage is so since this is grounded v g s n will be v g s n will be v g minus v s of n MOS agreed. If this is true then what I get from here is v g minus 0 of n what is v g is nothing but v in. So, v in will be for the n MOS will be there. So, v g s n s n is always equals to v in right. So, this is clear to you this is clear let me come to v d s n again very simple drain to source of n MOS drain to source of n MOS uh, uh, which is this one again drain to source is v d right uh, v d uh, minus v s right. What is V s? V s is as I told you is always grounded for n mos because this is source of n mos is grounded. So, V d minus 0 will be equals to your V d s n, but please understand V d is nothing but V out. So, it is basically V d s n equals to V out clear. So, these two are very simple and basic clear. Let us come to this point V g s V g s p and V d s p. So, if you look at V g s p this is gate to gate to source of p of p p type MOSFET. So, I have given v in here. So, the voltage between these two points will be nothing but v in minus v d d it is straightforward. So, v in minus v d d is v g s p fine this is also done. Let me come to v d s p v d s p is what d or drain to source for for p type. So, this is gate to source and drain to source for p type is drain to source for p type right it is nothing but v out will be there right and therefore, there will be this is, so, sorry this will be v out minus v d d. So, it will be v out minus v d d. So, so finally, we end up having these four equations which are the governing equations for inverter these are the four governing equations for inverter fine this, this the first comes from current continuity and other four comes from direct idea of substitution of voltages. If you have understood this then let us see what happens here. I just now told to you that I d n equals to I d s p. So, when you transfer from uh, along the x axis you get the same positive current as you are getting in the negative direction. So, whatever negative current you are getting here you get the almost the same current on this part, but then but then please understand as per my discussion just now which I was shown to you v in. So, if you look at v in is nothing but v g s p plus v d d v in if you look very closely here. So, v g s p is equals to v in minus v d d. So, what is your v in? v in is nothing but v g s p plus v d d. Assuming that v d d is 2.5 then I get 2.5 plus v g s p right this this equation I get this. 
So, whatever value of VGSP was one case minus 2.5. So, minus 2.5 plus 2.5 if you add I get 0 and this is this one I get minus 1 plus 2.5 I get minus 1.5 plus 1.5 and I get this. So, I am able to do what? I am able to convert on the x axis and change the value of the gate to V in from uh, from uh, 2.5 and 1.5 to 0 and 1.5. If you have understood these two points which are quite simple and uh, explainable, we now do a horizontal shift along the y axis. So, we first of all did what? We first of all shifted along the x axis and now we are horizontally shifting it along the y axis. right? So, we are doing what? We are shifting the whole thing from here and putting it this side and we got somewhere here. Right? You will ask me where should I till where should I say shift? Well, look at the uh, governing equation. If you look at this point governing equation this one, you can see that V out will be therefore equals to what V D S P plus V D D. Fine. So, so if this is true, I get 2.5 plus V D S P. So, what we do? We just shift it to this side and you got V out here. I got shifted to this point. Right. So, what has happened is I have been able to shift my PMOS transfer characteristics and made it almost in the first quadrant. Please understand my NMOS transfer uh, IV characteristics is always in the first quadrant and my PMOS is always in the third quadrant. So, I have to move from third to second, second to first right? and that is what we got here. So, let me see finally what happens therefore. So, this was your NMOS these dark lines which you see in front of you are all NMOS. Right, and we have been studying this. So V in equal 2.5. So V in is nothing but the gate to source voltage. V2, V3, V4. And I superimpose on that what these light lines, and these light lines are what PMOS. So starting from here, they are going like this. Now what you do, you you see which point is say for example I will give you an example. Let us say you take V in equals to one, right? And you take V in equals to one somewhere on this side. So V in equals to one is this one. Right. So, this is equals to V in equals to 1, this is V in equals to 1. So, this is equals to V in equals to 1 for NMOS right? and this is equals to V in 1 for PMOS. Now, they cut where? They cut somewhere here. So, this is the point where gate to source for both NMOS and PMOS will be exactly the same and the currents flowing through the device will also be same. So, I will get IDSP will be equals to minus IDSN. Fine. Similarly, the same applies to this point also, where you cut V in equals to 1.5 and V in equals to 1.5. So, this is the point where it cuts. Have you understood this point and the, I think it is clear to you. Therefore, why I am taking the same value of voltages? Because, I, because when I apply V in, it exactly applies to PMOS and NMOS the same manner and that is the reason you get something like this. With this knowledge or with this idea, let me come to therefore the basic concept of the, uh, the voltage transfer characteristics and the basic concept therefore is that we will have therefore only those voltages which are either low, which are either low or either very high. There is no voltage or no current in this region, please understand. This region is devoid of any transfer characteristics. So, either it is located here or located here. With this knowledge, we will just discuss this and stop here for this lecture that we will have V out versus V in right? and you have to plot those points where you get the same amount of current. So, if you see here uh, for V in equals to 0 0.5, I was getting a 2.5. Explain also, you got the point why? When the input is low, output will be high when the output is high input will be low. How I got these points? I got these points from these, this region. So, how do I get it? So, related to 0.5 I just check out where I am doing it. It is somewhere here it is almost near to V out which is 2.5 volts. When I go to higher voltage you say V in equals to say V in equals to 2.5 or 1.5 let us say then say I go to 2.5 when V in equals to 2.5 the cutting takes place very near to 0 axis 0 of V out. So, therefore, with this knowledge I can safely assume that this curve which you see in front of you is primarily the defined as the CMOS voltage transfer characteristics VTC right. Which means that when the input is low output is high, when the out input is high output is low fine. With this knowledge or with this idea let me stop here for this time we will continue after this within this thing. Thank you.